Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Health Matters webinar here. And we're going to focus today on nutrition. And if you missed our first Health Matters webinar, it was about the terrain. And that is our body's internal environment. So nutrition is one of those factors that can affect our terrain. It plays a critical role in the health of the terrain. And it's something every one of us can control. Um, we make choices every day, many times a day about what we're going to eat. And our food choices either nourish or deplete our body. There's really no in between. So let's choose to eat well, to be well. Now as Americans, what are we eating? Is it creating health in our bodies? The main source of nutrition, and I just had to put this out there, the main source of our nutrition should always be food. And I know that sounds crazy to have to say, but unfortunately, supplements, powders, protein powders, um, bars, energy bars, other enriched foods and like cereals and breads, they're all replacing real food for many people. So I just have to say food is food. Real food does not have ingredient labels. So let's look at what the standard American diet is. Now, not all of you may be eating this way. You might be eating some of this way, or you have eaten this way in the past. So let's take a look at it. So today's standard American diet, it consists of, unfortunately, loads of ultra processed foods with refined grains, added sugars, excess salt, unhealthy fats, and a host of chemicals that we would be challenged to even pronounce. We generally are consuming a lot of high energy, high calorie foods, but it has little or no real nutrition. Look at the common um, snack aisles in the grocery store. We have our chips, we have our pretzels, we have our crackers. They're offering empty calories, which are spiking our blood sugar, they're spiking our insulin levels, and they're making us eat even more because we're still hungry. Do you know Americans eat 10 billion donuts every year? That's a lot of donuts. That's a lot of sugar. We also, as a people group, consume 54 gallons of soda, and that is per person per year. That's also a lot of chemicals, a lot of um, sugar that is not needed. And if you look at the graph on your slide here, the blue area of the graph, along with that um, green part, that's showing that our American diet is severely lacking in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, clean protein, and healthy fats. Now, why are we eating sort of poorly? So there, I think there's a couple bad habits that we have sort of hooked onto that are breeding unhealthy eating for us. And it's part of our culture, really. So the first one is we tend to want our food fast. We want to be able to cook it on demand in minutes. We want it to go from the freezer to the microwave to the table whenever we want on demand. Or we're just going to grab something and eat it on the run from a fast food ven venue. And how many of you have sit, sat in a car lineup like the one on the screen at Chick-fil-A? And I have to admit I have. But it's unfortunate because people are, you know, patronizing these places way, way too often. It's becoming a staple of their diet. Uh, the second bad habit is we also want our food easy, easy, pre-prepared, able to grab it and go from a box or bag. And the third habit that I think we have is that we want flavor. It's got to scream. It's got to tantalize our taste buds. Look at all the sweet and salty snack foods that are advertised on TV or, you know, covering many of the aisles in the grocery store, including the dairy aisle, I will say, and the frozen food aisle. There's a whole row of ice creams out there. So we have sweet and salty snack foods and indulgence foods are just a big example of this craving or demand for flavor. And what happens is I think we really have lost touch with what real food looks like and tastes like. 
So we've got to get back there to get some good nutrition in. And if we are eating this standard American diet, or if we have grown up eating this way, one of the results of that is our bodies become very malnourished. 50% of people are nutrient deficient. And some of the key nutrients that are missing from our diet are on your screen. So we have calcium, we have potassium, vitamin C, vitamin D, dietary fiber, and iron. And it's becoming a global problem too. We don't just keep our bad habits and, and preferences to ourselves. We ship it around the globe. So, excuse me, according to a global hunger index just recently, they're claiming that 2 billion people worldwide are suffering from something called hidden hunger. And that's when people are actually starving, even though they're, well, they're starving because of malnutrition, but they're starving even though they're consuming enough calories. And that was posted in Scientific American magazine. And this was back in 2018. So to eat well, to be well, we need to focus more on the quality of our food. We have to learn to eat more nutritiously for our current health, for our future health, and for the health of our families. Because if you have kids out there, they are watching us, they're learning our patterns, they're learning how to shop, they're learning everything from us. And on the slide, even though these six nutrients we're generally deficient in, I put the foods there that are easily you know, available to us where we can get this nutrition from our good foods. So, and that looks delicious actually. So if nutrient deficiencies are not corrected, say we just keep eating um, more of the standard American diet than, more, than real food. So we're just living in this nutrient deficient state what happens is it's gonna to lead to malfunction of organs in the body, and eventually it's gonna to lead to disease, and none of us want that. And according to the FDA, this is just a year ago, it, they have stated that each year more than a million Americans are dying from diet-related diseases. Diet-related. That's something we can do something about. So I wanna just give you a couple bits of information about a few of these. You can read down the list there yourself, but obesity, the top one there, of course, a diet related disease, right? Well, in 2016, the United States ranked 12th most obese country in the world. That was out of 191. We are not, something is wrong with the foods that we are eating. I mean, it's also, we are stressed out. That's uh, a topic for another webinar. But again, food is playing a huge factor in this. Also, type 2 diabetes is on the list of a top diet-related disease. And I just have to read out these stats to you. This is from the CDC. This is just from last year. They put out a national diabetes statistics report. They are saying now that 11.3% of our population is diabetic. 38% are pre-diabetic and 23% are undiagnosed diabetics. If you add up those three numbers, you get 72%. That 72% of our American population is in some way or other, like dealing with a diabetic issue. That's, you know, alarming. And then depression's on this list of a top diet related disease. Nutritional deficiencies in your omegas, your omega-3s, your B vitamins, your minerals, amino acids even. Amino acids are precursors to proteins and neurotransmitters. We need those. So these deficiencies are affecting our brain and causing some depression. The people who have the least occurrence of depression, guess what they're eating? A lot of, and that's fish. So fish eaters actually have the lowest risk of um, depression. Also, I want to just mention carbohydrates are very important in our diet for proper serotonin production, which leads to proper brain health. So you do need your carbs. I know everybody's on these fad diets to cut out carbs and cutting down carbs. Yes, that may be good, but you can't cut them drastically. It will affect the brain brain's health, and you can be setting yourself up for some anxiety and de depression issues.
But the good news with all of these things, all of these top, you know, diet related diseases is that they are preventable. They are reversible for the most part. If you change the diet, you improve the terrain and better health is going to follow guaranteed. So here we are, let's get to our tips. Let's eat well to be well. And I'm going to give you about five tips here. So let's start with the first one. And the first one, you know, I want us to make food work for us. So let's get into that. And the first thing is that we have to know what real food is. So some questions to ask yourself. I know this is, you know, silly maybe to some people, but ask yourself, was it alive? Did it grow? Did it fly? Did it swim? Did it walk? Was it made from something that did? Did God make it or did a factory make it? So those are simple questions that are going to help you be more intentional with your food choices. I want you to think of food as a love language. You're speaking to your body. When you eat real food, those microbes in your gut biome are happy campers and they're going to reward you with energy, clear thinking, and a very strong immune system. And we all want that. Now, before I move on to our next tip, I want to say some other things about, you know, this real food. So because of our fast pace, we always want to take shortcuts. We want to eat fortified foods. We want to take a lot of supplements to offset what we're not eating. But supplementing is not the same. It is very useful in certain issues or certain circumstances, but it's not the same. Our bodies recognize the nutrition, the nutrition and nutrients from food easily. Our bodies know how to use it. And unlike artificial and that synthesized nutrition found in most vitamin supplements out there and the fortified foods, you can never beat the nutritional benefits of real food. And an example is an orange or other citrus fruits. Now we say we eat an orange to get vitamin C, right? But an orange is so much more. And I put this little quote on uh, your screen from NIH, and I'll try to read it pretty briefly here. Um, and it's, they're saying citrus fruits are abundant in other macronutrients, including sugars, dietary fiber, potassium, folate, calcium, thiamine, niacin, vitamin B6, phosphorus, magnesium, copper, riboflavin, and panathenic acid. And citrus fruits contain a number of secondary metabolites such as flavonoids, alkaloids, coumarins, limonoids, carotenoids, phenol acids, and essential oils. The secondary, these active secondary metabolites are showing several bioactivities of vital importance to human health. They're giving us antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, anti-cancer effects, as well as cardiovascular protective effects and neuroprotective effects. This is from NIH. You know, they're praising all the nutrition that's in an orange. So, you know, think of your food way more than a single nutrient or that you're just getting, you know, maybe one or two things from your food. You are getting way more than um, you think, and you are getting even way more than science has even um, extracted and identified. And I've, I couldn't find it for... Um, you know, to put the link here, but there is still, I think they estimate like a thousand compounds in an orange that they know are there, but they can't, they have not identified it. So everything God made, you know, has, is power packed with nutrition for us. Another thing with eating real food, and I, I know a lot of you are going to ask, you know, do we have to eat organic? Now organic is good, but it's not always necessary. I would suggest that you go to EWG's website, that's Environmental Working Group, they put out the dirty dozen list every year and you can use that as a guide to the foods that you probably should try to eat more organic of because they're more polluted with pesticides and other chemicals and that's ewg.org so avoid um, some of these dirty dozen foods but also avoid anything that you know is gmo'd or genetically engineered they have had their their genetic material altered by DNA technology for various growing reasons, probably uh, most often, and they're just toxic to the body. Even NIH, the National Institutes of Health, have said that they that 
They have found most studies with the genetically modified foods are indicating that they're causing toxic effects to the liver, pancreas, your kidneys, reproduction, reproductive organs, and they're changing hematological, that's your blood, biochemical, and immunologic parameters. And they're also linked to cancer. That's from NIH. So if you see, and I put two labels here for you, one says non-GMO product, that's certifying that this product is not a GMO food. The other one, however, is, is indicating that it is bioengineered. So I would avoid that one. So now let's get to our second tip. And I love this one. And it's enjoy different parts of your foods that you're already eating to get additional nutritional benefits. So think twice before throwing scraps away, for example. Save them in a big baggie, put them in the freezer, use them in bone broth or homemade stocks. You can save your chicken bones, beef bones, fish bones even, make homemade stocks. You will extract all the nutrients out of the bones and the marrow and um, really get a power packed um, broth there, better than any you would find at a grocery store. Another idea is to eat the peels from some citrus fruits. You can zest that peel, you can slice it and put it on your foods, on your dishes. You can put it into, I think it's called a remoulade, which is like a seasoning a spice mix, which is delicious over poultry or fish. You can candy those peels. You can pickle those peels. Anything fermented is great, including your peels. Um, we have been pickling and fermenting lemon slices here for the past two months, and it's they're amazing. I have to just say they're amazing. They're helping our digestion and it's not an enzyme. It's from real food. So another health, that's a health benefit. And if you guys want the recipe for that, just text me or I will put a link below to how to do that. And don't throw away the greens off of any of your other like radishes and beets that you buy. Those are super nutritious. They are, you know, plenty edible and they're yummy. I put a picture here of a pesto you can make. And also when it comes to meat, you can eat the skin off of your chicken, for example. That is way delicious, way better than any potato chips out there. And that fat, and I'm just going to use the chicken skin as an example, that fat has the same good fat in it as your olive oil. It also has protein and iron and potassium and calcium. So next time, don't throw it away. Take it off the chicken if you're getting a rotisserie chicken or something and just put it in a pan, cook it. You will, all the fat will render off. You can actually keep that fat in the fridge and use it um, in frying or just, you know, toss it and eat the skin. It is delicious. Also, um, you know, if you think back to our grandparents, maybe you remember them having a roast or even, you know, off of, the chicken or anything, and they're eating the collagen. They're eating the cartilage even. I can remember my dad chewing on the cartilage. It just wasn't my thing, but you know what? A little bit of that and a little collagen is very good for the body. Now, our next eat well to be well tip is moderation and rotation. I want you to have fun with your food. This one is all about having fun with your food. Make healthy eating very colorful and exciting. Something to look forward to. If you look on the screen here, you can make a sandwich and a salad that is going to be utterly boring. It's boring, it's unappetizing, and it's also lacking in nutrition. Or you can create a colorful work of art, something your eyes are just feasting on and it is going to be loaded with way more nutrition and flavor, and you're going to enjoy eating those things more often. And uh, I put moderation and rotation. Moderation, I just have to say everything in moderation. I don't care if it's something good for you, like carrots or bean sprouts or, you know, whatever, fish, everything in moderation and rotation. Rotation. Do not eat the same meals over and over. Experiment with different foods, ones you may not be familiar with. Maybe you've never tried sprouts or goat cheese or any fermented vegetables. Get out there and try it. 
expand your 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 repertoire of foods and you will expand the types of nutrients that your body is given that you're giving your body and i like this tip so eat well i like all my tips but eat well to be well tip number four is make seasonings work for you so seasoning your food can be a chance to add in that big flavor that i said you know we all have a habit of wanting big flavor so it's a chance to add in big flavor and nutrition on the bottom of the right screen i have herba mare that's a uh, something i have at home it gives you the benefit of herbs and spices together with the sea salt just use it sparingly you know everything again in moderation no need to go overboard with any seasonings either so herba mare is a good choice um, also, if you're using salt, you might want to use some Celtic sea salt. That one actually has the highest mineral content out there of the salts. Liquid aminos is a good choice for um, supplying some essential amino acids to the diet. And it tastes, you know, very soy sauce, it has a soy sauce flavor to it. Apple cider vinegar, you're going to get, if you use this in, on top of your salads or, you know, even put a splash in a stew, you're going to get some extra um, enzymes to help you digest your food. So very good um, seasoning choices. Um, I'm going to talk about sweets here just for a minute. So natural sweets, always choose natural sweets over that white, very, very processed chlorinated sugar. So we have molasses, honey, maple syrup, coconut sugar, dates, etc. You can, you can wipe out almost all of that white sugar in recipes and everything by, you know, using mashed banana, using pureed dates, switching to a little bit of maple and even cutting down the sugar by half. If you are a baker and you love to bake, you can cut down the sugar. I am not a big fan of artificial sweet. I mean, do not eat artificial sweeteners, but even things like stevia and uh, those other plant related ones out there and I'm blanking on the other name. Just please use them in moderation. That's all I'm going to say about that. And herbs and spices. I have a picture up in the upper right hand corner. Herbs and spices. These are active plant compounds with a host of health benefits used exclusively in Ayurvedic and Chinese medicine. They are just plain good for the body. And they're also going to help you cut down on wanting salt and sweets. So it is good to use um, a lot of spices. And I don't have a picture of it here, but I want you to choose your oils and fats wisely. That they're also seasonings. Better options are extra virgin olive oil, avocado oil, coconut oil, organic butter, hemp, sesame seed oil, and I would tend to avoid those other seed oils if possible. So let's make seasonings work for us. Our food's gonna taste fantastic and we're getting extra nutrition without even trying. And our last tip today is just sort of a question, but do we have to supplement? And I would say not always, but as we get older, the answer is gonna be more yes. If we have some health issues, the answer is going to be yes. Everybody generally may have to supplement to a different degree. And number one reason why, and this is just something we generally don't have a lot of power over, is that our food is just not as nutritious as it used to be. It's a fact that the quality of the nutritional quality of food has been declining since 1950s, just because of farming methods, soil depletion, they're growing only certain, you know, high yield varieties that are less nutritious. But I've even seen that they're blaming elevated carbon dioxide in the air for causing lower mineral content in food. So it's happening. Several studies, you know, study after studies confirming this. They've followed vegetables for 20 years, 50 years and showed declines in, you know, significant declines in calcium, iron and potassium and even vitamin C so and vitamin A. So our minerals, our vitamins are, you know, not as present as they used to be in our vegetables. You today, I've, I've seen the stats that you would have to eat, and this might even be greater, I forget when what year this was, but they said you would have to eat eight oranges today to get the same amount of vitamin A out of that 
as your grandparents would have gotten from one. So um, supplementing is probably a good idea. It's not always required, but you know, I'm going to throw it out there. Second, um, I, I mentioned aging briefly. As we age, the nutrient um, requirements of our bodies change. And actually for every decade, it's pretty significant. By the time you're about 40, you're going to need double the minerals. So it's very important to eat more of those real foods, your, your vegetables that have a lot of minerals. But can you eat enough? Maybe not. So supplementing is an option. So smart supplementing could be needed. Always supplement with whole food supplements and those from organically sourced products. We don't want to be putting anything synthetic and fake into the body. It actually will cause more harm than good. So if you're not sure about whether you do need to supplement or not, just call, uh, contact the office, call us if you're in for a, a checkup or anything like that. You know, we can, we can put you on track with what you may need. Uh, here's our summary of how we can eat well to be well without, you know, reinventing the wheel. It's all about that one degree of change today that will give us a profound uh, health benefits down the road. One degree of change today, that's all we need. So which one is it going to be for you? Are you going to focus more on eating real food? Are you going to enjoy different parts of your foods for additional nutrient boosts? Are you going to have fun with your food more? Try a bigger variety. And remember, moderation and rotation. And definitely make seasonings work for you. And if needed, supplements are out there. Just don't use them as the, um, the main source of your nutrition. So I hope you got some good tips and tricks today for making food work for you, for eating well to be well. And again, God gave us a host of food on this planet. And he didn't just willy nilly throw, you know, seeds or give us plants and vegetables for us. He was very intentional and everything is out there that we need from the grains to the vegetables, to the fruits, to the fats, you know, it's out there, eat more of it. And, you know, it's tasty. So I thank you for um, watching and listening to our, our webinar. Please watch for any upcoming Health Matters webinars. I'm going to be trying to put one out a month. And these are all on things that are going to influence our terrain or our body's internal environment. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook. Um, those are the ways that you can watch for anything coming up. So I thank you again, and if we can be of any help to you, please feel free to contact the office. Thank you.